Hello everyone, good morning gardeners and guests. A very warm welcome to the virtual live food waste reduction cooking demo organized by the Southwest CDC and Shatec in support of the Climate Action Week 2021. This virtual event is also part of Shatec 4 Sustainability Initiative. I'm Tian Hui and I'll be your MC for today. I'd like to take this chance and welcome and thank everyone for joining us on a Saturday morning. Climate Action Week, which is held this week between 12 to 18 July, is organized by the Ministry of Sustainability and the Environment to rally the communities to take collective climate action and secure sustainable future in Singapore. Food waste is one of the largest waste streams in Singapore. Back in 2019, Singapore generated about 744,000 tons of food waste, which is equivalent to around two bowls being wasted per person every single day. In support of the newly launched Singapore Green Plan 2030, which is also in line with the goals of the Sustainable Southwest Master Plan, Southwest CDC is partnering with Shatec to organize this cooking demo to show you how you can use common edibles uh, in your garden, such as curry leaves and turmeric leaves, and also fully utilize different parts of the vegetable, for example, corn kernels and corn cobs, in two delicious dishes that you can seem easily whip out for your family members. Today, we have with us Chef Jay Teo, culinary trainer at Chatec. Hi everybody, good morning. And he'll be teaching us how to cook the two dishes that he specially created for today's cooking demo shortly. Chef Jay Teo is an award-winning chef and is formerly the head chef of a Michelin star restaurant. He is currently returned to his alma mater as a full-time culinary trainer to impart his knowledge and Chef Jay graduated from Shatec back in 2015 with the Diploma in Culinary Skills. In the same year, he, represent, he represented Singapore in the 7th International Tapas Competition in Spain and emerged as the champion. After his graduation, he joined the Unlisted Collection where he, whereby he rapidly rose through the ranks to the head chef of a Michelin star chic bistro. Expressing his creativity and culinary artistry, Chef Jay loves to create playful and yet bold dishes with familiar flavours. Joining us as guest chef today, we have two gardeners from our Southwest District Community Garden here with us. Madam Saharida from Ihua Zone 2 Community Garden. Yeah, hello. And Madam Kamisa from Sky Garden at Jurong Central Zone Good morning, Team. hello. I would like to invite Madam Kamisa to take a seat first while Chef Jay and Madam uh, Saharida prepare the first dish. Okay. Okay, yes. are you ready? Yeah, sure. Let's prepare. <clears throat> so, so first dish of the day, we have the dry asam fish. Yeah. So what would you call dry asam fish, Madam Saharida? Uh, that's asam fish. That's yeah? asam fish. Samus. Okay, okay. It's so, only now dry. Yeah. So, so today, so I'm going to do a traditional asam fish, but I'm going to split it up into two components. So when you eat it together, it's an asam fish. So we can go to the ingredients. So for the ingredients wise, we have over here the rempa that we have you we have already pounded yesterday. So inside we have some of the lemongrass, chilies, uh, ginger, shallots, as well as uh, garlic. Then inside I have also added a little bit of salt, yeah. as well as uh, some curry powder, yes. fish curry powder. Yes. Then of course we have uh, already some chopped up. Tomatoes, tomatoes yeah. then uh, some asam paste that has been uh, mixed with some water, water yeah. so that mm. later it's easier for us to use it. Mm. And of course, the white eggplant, this we are going to burn later, the, the skin, burn it, so you are going to have some smoky flavours inside the eggplant itself. And last but not least, some of this very nice turmeric leaves. This we are going to wrap, it, wrap the fish uh, in it, so it's going to look like some ota. So it, what it's going to do is some, impart some of that turmeric leaf flavour inside it. Then uh, for, and then after that, we are going to lay some of the curry, curry leaves, leaves on yeah. top mm -hmm. as well as uh, use some of it to fry it. Yep. So that's sure. all. So, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot about this. Yeah. So of course, this is one of the new ingredients that I learnt off when mm -hmm. I went to the garden itself. So this is called Ulam Raja. Ulam Raja. Oh. So I didn't know until that day when I went to the mm, garden. Yes. So when I tasted it, it was like a green mangoes <laughs> and a bit of the pakia. What is that called? Mm, 
one. Let, let me think. Mm. Uh, it's like guava. Mm, a little yeah, bit like yes, green yes, mango, yes. a little bit like guava. Mm. So it's very refreshing. Uh, so this, if we translate it, it's like a uh, king of the salad. King of salad. <laughs> yeah, actually king of definitely, salad. Definitely, definitely. Yes, right. king Ulam Raja, yes. You actually yes, found uh, this Ulam Raja at uh, Madame Sahavida's garden, is it? Yes. Yeah, at ah. New Hua Zone 2 garden. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Alright, mm. so let's get started then. Eh? Yeah. Let's get started. So for now, can I get you to help me burn the eggplant? Will you be comfortable with it? So all you need to do is just burn the skin of it until it's really dark and black. Okay. So like that. Let me just show you one first. Yes. So we we'll just burn the skin. So the burning, the burning of the skin itself. Uh, don't worry, the flesh itself will not be burned. So this will be part of the cooking process as well. What's the reason for burning the skin? May I know? So, so mm. like uh, if I cook it on the pan itself, mm. uh, when it gets charred, the flavour doesn't get into the eggplant itself. So mm. by doing this, uh, after we char it, after we take off the skin, mm. the charred skin, you actually get a very nice smoky or wok hay flavour inside. Smoky oh, taste, yeah. yeah mm. Inside the eggplant itself. Mm. So after this, then we'll just flip it over, so with a tongs. So just help me char the whole eggplant. Okay, okay. Mm. Here you go. Careful. Right. So Chef, what's the difference here. between uh, normal eggplant and the white eggplant? So normal eggplant and white eggplant. So the white mm. eggplant is actually softer than the normal eggplant. Mm. So it cooks a lot faster. So actually by charring it like this in this way after and after we remove it, the mm. eggplant itself is actually already cooked. Oh, I see, I see. Interesting. And then uh, I, I find that the white eggplant has a bit more uh, sweeter taste oh, to so it. So it's more sweet, I yeah. see. Mm. Alright. So while she, Madam Saharida is doing that, I'm going to start cooking a little bit of the relish first. So, so is it burnt all the entire eggplant to its Chuck? Yes, chuck, chuck the whole skin oh, of the eggplant. Okay. Then after that, we will just wash it off with the water. Then mm. it oh. will be able to just peel off oh. by itself easily. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so in the meantime, I'll just start off with the relish. So this, we'll just on the pan, get it hot. Yep, nice. Yeah. Mm. Just a little bit more over here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the first time I burn <laughs> green <laughs> gel. Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. So okay. for this, mm. then now we'll just off it first. Mm. So for now, we are going to bring this over. We we'll just go to the sink for a quick one. Just wash off the skin. So you can actually see that it's still charred and burning hot, but it's actually not that hot. Okay, oh, I can cool. just hold it like that. Mm. But you can feel that the eggplant itself is quite soft, mm. so it's actually cooked. So now we'll just put it under the water. Just, uh, you see, just gently rubbing it, the skin will just drop off by itself. Oh. Then you see that uh, it has got that little nice brown colour to it. Mm. So it's really, really nice and roasted. So if you want later, when you cut, dice it up for me, you just cut a small slice and have it like that. Then you can see that the flavour is really, really very mm. amazing. And sweet too. Sweet, mm. smoky, it's like a barbecue. Mm, it's it. almost like a barbecue scallop. Mm. That means we can eat it straight, straight away. You can eat it yeah, straight away. Yeah. It's cooked mm. already. Mm. So for the relish itself, I'm going to do it uh, so it's going to be like a room temperature. It's not going to be hot and all. So it's more like a East meets West kind of uh, dish that we have today. So it's the Asian dish that we have some Western touch to it. So usually the Asians, we don't use all this blow torch and all. Mm, yeah, so I thought to make it more interesting, I would turn this uh, into a Western mm. meets Asian dish. So okay. yes, can you please help me dice up? Dice it up. Dice up into small uneven cubes like this one. Okay. So while you are at it, you can actually just cut off a little bit the ones that are more to the center, then you just have a piece to try the flavor. You mean try so and eat? Ma yeah, Sarah you can Rida eat. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what will Chef be doing? So I'm going to start cooking the tomato relish. Mm. So just a little bit of tomatoes, a bit of oil, we just get the pan hot again. Alright. So 
So I'm going to try it, yeah? Yes. You can try some two jian hao. No, oh, sure, I can try some too. Yeah. Try the middle, okay, I'll try this. Yeah. One. Yeah. You like it? Mm, yes, like, actually. It has a very yeah, nice. This chart, yeah. Taste. Mm. So, so a that's the flavor inside. that I like from it. Mm. So while while we are doing that, I'm going to start with the relish. Mm. So high heat, we are going to sweat the tomatoes, and to help it to dehydrate faster, we are going to put a little bit of salt to it. Mm. So salt actually help it to dehydrate faster, is it? Yes. So the salt mm. will help to draw out the water content inside the tomatoes. Mm. It's like how we use uh, salt on all the preserved vegetables and fishes mm, and I all. See. So the whole thing is that the salt will bring draw out the moisture inside and that will help the preservation process because I see, I see. a lot of things will spoil because of the moisture inside it. Mm. So using the salt will help to draw out the moisture from this and you can see that it has already gotten a lot softer mm. and a lot of the water has been expelled. Mm. I also have to just add on for this white egg plant, right? There's this lingering sweetness inside my mouth. It tastes, it tastes similarly like a banana taste, but there's lingering taste inside. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, right, like a ripe banana, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So, highly recommend for you all to try. <laughs> so, this is just really, really quick. Mm. So, the tomatoes has now broken down into like a jam kind of thing. Then, we'll just wait for the eggplant to go in. Then, we add on the asam to it. Let it cook a little bit until it's reduced into a nice paste then we are done for the relish mm. so it's all very very simple but you see that this simple process of the mm. charring of the skin itself brought on so much flavor mm, yes i agree with that okay so, so i'll add, add this to the tomato paste itself. yes add to the tomato paste mm. then while you're waiting we can also help me chop out some of the ulam raja oh yes mm. so Madam Sarvila, Chef yes. Jay actually said that, mentioned that you know this ulam raja it was from your garden itself, right? Yes, yes. Apart from this ulam raja, what other uh, vegetable do you grow in your community garden itself? Oh, vegetables. Uh, hmm. We have uh, kailan, we have pat, uh, pat choy. Oh, yeah. Okay. What yes. are some of the common, most common vegetable that? Oh, we we grow? have uh, brinjal hmm, and brinjol. and lady fingers. Hmm. Yeah. We also have roots like uh, sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. tapioca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also have. Uh, um, uh, we also have uh, different squashes. Yeah, yes, yes. Mm. And then we have this uh, lemongrass. We have chilies. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember seeing some different breeds of the spinach as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah there's yeah. a lot of variety in terms yes, of vegetable. Yes. But mm. apart from our vegetable, do we have anything else? Uh, we have fruits also. Oh, fruits also have. Yeah, we mm. have uh, papayas mm, papaya. and um, jambu. Oh, jambu. Uh, it's a uh, roast apple. Roast apple. Ah, yeah. I see, I see. We have uh, those uh, kedondong in in Malay. Mm. Kedondong. I don't know what they call it in mm. English. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have uh, uh, sugar cane. Sugar cane also. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. I uh, never actually visited a community garden before. <laughs> I'll do so someday. You <laughs> need to. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Like, uh, chef, is this enough or some more? Yeah, this is good. Uh, so, so that will fold inside together like a salad. So this, once once you can see that now it's still a bit uh, watery, I'm just going to let it cook down a bit until it's mm. slightly thicker. Mm. Then after that, we put it in the bowl then together with the ulam raja. Yeah. So that will be the paste. Mm. Actually, this ulam raja, we actually eat it raw as, it? Like, uh, as salad. But Does today really our chef like, want to. Uh, uh, really so like so it's same. So I'm going to do it like a salad as well. Yeah. So oh. that's why I'm going to cook this first. Let it cool down a bit. Now fold in the ulam raja together. Mm. Oh, okay. How does the ulam raja taste like? You should actually try one for yourself. Oh, like I got really really surprised oh, yeah. the first time I had it. I was like, wow. Okay, I'll try one for myself. Why 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 haven't I come across this mm. kind of uh, ingredients before? So while waiting for the tomato. Does this really acidic? I not say is it acidic flavor? Yeah. Mm. Mm, yeah. Very refreshing. Uh, actually, uh, refreshing and yet min a bit minty, minty kind of taste. Mm. Just slightly mint only. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I also make uh, mix it with my omelette. Omelette. Yeah, yeah. Do you mm. put it like on top as? Uh, no, I mix it with the eggs oh, and just uh, oh, fry it. Yeah. Mm. So I, I think it gives it another whole new level of taste yes, to the omelette yeah. itself, right? Mm. Ah, I see. Like a. Uh, 
a very unique. I, I can't explain this. So so thing like the first time I had it, it brought me to Thailand. Thailand. Oh. When when they use a lot of all these green mangoes. Mm. Uh, guavas and all for their salad. So I was like, oh, this is this is really really nice. Mm. Like you really like if I can add it to any salads itself, it can uh, mm. mimic like vegetables and different kinds of fruits. Mm, I see. So it, it brings on a different level on its own just just by the leaves itself. Mm. And I remember that uh, that day itself, I actually had some of the flowers as well, and the flowers was even more concentrated in flavor. So, I see, I see. so for now, what I'm doing is actually I'm just taking off the stems of the turmeric leaves. So today, the leaves we are going to wrap it together with the fish itself. Mm. So that's the stems is a lot harder, but mm. of course for the stems, usually we can actually use it uh, with the stems itself if we chop it fine enough. So mm. usually some of the rim parts we can add. Yeah, actually we actually use a turmeric leaf uh, in rendang also. Ah, mm. uh, yeah, mm. in rendang in our. Uh, Asam, mm. uh, I mean our Malay asam uh, recipes, yeah. Mm. Mm. So what you're gonna do is gonna wrap it, wrap this around the fish, is it like a banana yes. wrapping kind of stuff? Correct. So mm. so it's going to be a bit. We were going to resemble a ota. Mm. Then we're going to grill it. Then after that we are going to open it up. So just help me stir it occasionally yeah, until, it, until uh, it's dry. yeah slightly dry. Mm. You don't want it to be too dry. So while I prepare this. So after this portion is done, after we have wrapped it up, then uh, we have cooked the fish, mm. then we can actually have the taste of the dish itself. Alright, I can't wait. So Chef, you also mentioned about this particular ingredient that you actually mix with mortar and pasta. Yeah, yeah so, so what is it again? Sorry. So, so over here is the mm. rempa that we have the today. Rempa. All right. So, so what is it made of? Uh, we have uh, shallots, shallots all right. then uh, garlic, garlic, ginger, mm. a bit of uh, curry powder, Mm, then uh, of course powder. some of the lemongrass. Ah, I see that explains the color itself. Yes. Mm, I see. So how, how, what, what would this taste like? So it's going to be a little bit mm. spicy. spicy. So, so this is where the spiciness comes from and mm. a bit of the sweetness uh, from the shallots. Ah, so it's something like sweet and spicy. Sweet and spicy, yeah, but ah. more on the spicy side the spicy because side, uh, I, I actually quite like things. A little sour, is it? Uh, then the sourness, the sourness is going to come from all over here. Oh, yeah, yeah it makes sense. The relish itself. Mm. So for the fish itself, I'm just going to gently, lightly season the fish. Mm. So next, we are going to lay it onto the turmeric leaves. Mm. So I actually watched some cooking show. Uh, some, some people actually like to season the fish at a later part. Later part, so I mm. prefer to season it at the start mm. because then the salt will be able to penetrate into the ah, fish itself. I also, I saw some people actually tap the fish, tap the fish so the salt actually get absorbed into the fish. Yes. Mm. Does it really help? So it does. So mm. it really depends on how long you are going to marinate the fish for. Ah, I if see, it's I see. for a short process mm. uh, and or more like uh, for people that season it at the end of it, mm. they, they want the flavour only on the surface of it. Ah, so when you bite it together, you find mm. that the first bite is very salty, but as you chew it together, it starts to mix together. Mm. Then that's when you find that uh, it's a lot more milder. Mm. So what we are going to do now is actually just going to spread the rumpa all over the meat portion of the ah, fish. I see. Okay, it's going to be really sweet and spicy. And yes. Including the sourness of the tomato later. Yes, so it's going to be very fragrant as well from mm. the lemongrass that's inside. Mm, all right. So this is just a very basic rempa mm, that right. we have. Okay. So I'm going to change it up a bit. So I'm going to dress this uh, with our curry leaves as well. Mm, I see. So for all the audience that are watching on Zoom right out there, right? If you've got any questions, just feel free to type your questions in the chat box below. I can actually see it on my iPad here. Yeah. Then after that, if you have any questions, you will ask. I will try to answer mm, yeah, as best as I can. Yeah, you ever have any questions for Chef Jay? Uh, yeah, just ask any questions to do. <laughs> so we'll just do this. Then after that, I'll just take a bit of the curry leaves off. Mm. So curry leaves is very easy. You can just uh, just pull it off. Then it will actually just come off by itself. So this, I'm going to lay it back onto the fish itself. So it looks like a bit of fish scales. Alright, so what Chef is doing is actually laying the curry, the curry leaves onto the fish itself that is being covered by in the raja, is it? The rempa. Oh, rempa, rempa. Yeah. So I think this is okay. So we can just turn it off. I'll just turn it off. So now we are just going to wrap this whole thing together. 
Oh, so, sorry, Chef. When are you going to put the? So the, this one later. Oh, inside just, here. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. You fold mm. together. Mm. Ah. Actually, you can transfer it over. Now. Yeah. Mm. At all, ah? Uh? Yes, at all. Like I like the flavor mm. of that. So we are going to lay the curry leaves onto this. So I, after after this, after you wrap it, are you gonna grill it or? So after this, we are going mm. to grill it straight. Nah, no, grill it straight. Then once it's grilled, mm. it's done. Then after that, we can actually plate it up onto a plate. Mm, and I we see. can start tasting. Mm. Mm. So it's actually a very uh, interesting recipe and yet easy to do. It's well. easy to do. It's so like I like to do things that is uh, easy, mm. but it's a bit out of the norm. Ah, so okay. like a lot of things that we do mm. is still uh, very relatable to everybody. Like I like to play with flavors that I'm familiar with. Mm. So it's a bit different, but at the same time, when you taste it, you realize that it's the same thing. It's just that it's uh, slightly different. So once this is done, we we'll just wrap it up like a parcel. Let's see, to make sure it's nice and neat. Then after that, we'll wrap it over. Mm. So now it's going to be fully encased inside, like a parcel. So it won't fall off, right? Do you need to like wrap it more? So normally, mm. so because I'm going to use this more of like a a uh, way to make sure that the fish doesn't burn, so mm. it's okay. Ah, I see, I see. So it's just going to be like a parcel like this. Mm. So next, I'm just going to grill it onto. <coughs> so before grilling, I'm just going to fry off a bit of the curry leaves to use as garnish later. Mm. So it become crispy, crispy, is it? Yes. Ah. So we get some crispy oh, curry like leaves. Mm. So the smells of the turmeric leaf will just come out. Mm. Ah. Mm. So the curry leaves, we are going to flavor the oil with the curry leaves first. Mm. Then after that, then we use that flavored oil to fry the turmeric, the fish that's wrapped in the turmeric leaves. So for this, I think you need to stand aside a bit because this will splatter quite a bit. So we just need to wait for the oil to be hot enough. Then after that, we can drop the curry leaves in. Then it will turn translucent very fast and that will be a very crispy curry leaves. Mm. Right now, it's nice and hot. Right, so what you did is actually you turn off the fire, is it? I turn, turn it off, lower. Turn the heat. Oh, turn the, the heat so lower. you can see ah, that right. it's going to splatter a bit. Mm. That's okay. So once you put it in, you can actually take it out really oh, fast. Oh, it's just like three seconds only. Yeah, just a couple of seconds. Mm. Then after that, this is done. Ah. So we'll use this uh, for garnishing later. Oh, it smells really good. It smells really good. So just some mm. of this. This will be used as the garnish. And it's really nice and crispy already. Then next, we'll be frying the fish. So don't worry. So for the fish, we're going to cook it in the curry leaf oil. So I'm just going to grill it inside. Oh. So how long will we be cooking this fish for? So for the fish itself, mm. it's about 5 minutes, it's more five than enough. Minutes, uh. mm. For one, both sides or? So both sides, so about mm. 3 minutes for ah. here, then we'll flip it over. Mm. I see, I see. Then after that, we can plate it up after. Mm. So now you can smell that there's a bit of the turmeric leaves flavour coming out. Yeah. So the fish will get cooked right, even though it's been wrapped in the turmeric leaves? Yes. Mm. And for me, I usually try not to cook, overcook the fish because mm, especially for Spanish mackerel, when you overcook, it's going to be a bit tough. Mm. So just test the seasoning. Seasoning is good. Are we going to be using the turmeric leaf afterwards? Or? Turmeric leaf? Yeah. So, so after that, after mm. cooking, we are going to unwrap. Unwrap it, alright. Unwrap it, then we are just serve the ah, fish itself. The fish, yeah. So yeah. The, the turmeric leaf actually add in the, the flavour into the fish yeah. itself already. Uh. Mm. So the, this the smell of the turmeric leaves are mm. so strong. Mm. Very very strong. I actually like the smell of turmeric leaf. Yeah. Uh, but when I was young, I actually don't really like it. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I smell turmeric, I like I run away from my mother <laughs> because I know she's going to cook something with uh, turmeric inside her drinks mm. or even like some of the desserts. Mm. But it's more of like something that I grew to like when I became older. Mm. So, Madam Sarida, while Chef Jay is cooking, right? Maybe I can ask you some questions first. 
Yeah, maybe you can send it Would you like to come over? Yeah, come yes. Over yeah. So during your free time, right, do you actually cook at home using the, the edibles that has uh, been grown yeah. from your garden? Sure, sure, sure. Mm. I, I use uh, turmeric leaf uh, mm. uh, mixed with my rendang. Mm, yeah. rendang. Mm. So uh, you, what, what kind of edibles, what kind of vegetable do you use the most actually? Me? Yeah. Oh, actually, uh, this most of my cooking I use mm. uh, is lemongrass. Lemongrass. Lemon uh, mm. uh, actually, all uh, all uh, cooking we use onions la, mm, onions, yeah, so garlic. Sure. Mm. Yeah. But most of my cooking, mm. I will use uh, lemongrass. Ah, lemon our asam itself. pedas, our mm. curry, mm. our rendang, our uh, I mean those uh, uh, pindang. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. I see, I see. Oh. So you just mentioned also you got you grow some fruits also, right? In your yeah. Do you grow fruits also? Yes, you mentioned yes, you grow yes, fruits also, yes. right? Mm. So the fruits also can be actually uh, bring it back home to use it and, 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 and eat it also, right? And you see, uh, we, mm. I, I forget to mention Chana, mm. we have bananas also. Bananas also. Uh, those, uh, 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 those not ripe one, mm. we also cook bananas. Mm. Oh. Mm -mm. So, so interesting about bananas, like uh, even the flower itself mm. can be used. Uh, yes, yeah, the, ah, the flowers of the bananas also we, mm. we can uh, cook. I yeah. see, I see. Mm. Mm, interesting. All right, mm. oh, so I think we have some questions from the ground itself. Okay, thank you for the question. So, uh, someone uh, called Tan Siu Lin asked uh, if, she yep. can, if she can get any turmeric leaves from the wet market itself. You can actually get turmeric leaves from the wet market itself. Mm. Just that you have to ask the people that sells the vegetables. Mm. Because sometimes it's hidden inside the chillers and all. Yeah, ah, yeah, so it's yeah. not really a common vegetable found that will display, being displayed out or something. It's because yeah. more, more of the time, like a lot of people mm. don't know how to use all these turmeric leaves and all. Ah, so, so a lot of times they will reserve it for all the hawker centers or people that are going to make rendang. Yeah, yeah. Some sort of curry. I see, I see. Mm. Oh, interesting. But of course, if you ask mm. the wet market people, the people mm. that sell the vegetables, they will tell you that, oh, actually, I have some turmeric leaves They, they have it, but they mm. keep it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I see. Oh, there's another question also from Jamila. All right, so I think this question is directed to the chef itself. Can we steam instead of uh, pan frying it? Yes, you can steam instead of pan frying it as mm. well. So what, what will be the difference then? So it's just like when you steam it, it's a cleaner flavor. Mm. Just that I, I prefer it to have a bit of char, a bit of that... Uh, wok flavor and all. Ah, I see, I see. So, so by cooking it on the pan itself, mm. like we are going to give it some caramelization, a mild mm. reaction, mm. which makes all the rimpa even more sweeter and all. Mm. True, true. So wait, if you, let's say you want to steam it, right? How long will it take? Steam for mm. this small piece, I mm. would say about five, six minutes five, is more six than enough. all the same. Uh. Yeah. Mm, so see. over here, I actually have a thermometer. Oh, okay. So I'll just check it. So actually about 62 degrees, 68 degrees is 62 enough. to 68 degrees, is it? So because it's going to mm. be very hot, it's going to continue cooking. So mm. I'll just stop it at about 58. So ah. let the heat mm. from continue the leftover heat to slow, slowly cook it. Yes. Ah, I see. Okay. All right, we hope you answered our question. So yes, uh, feel free to ask us any more questions in the chat box below. Don't worry on that oh. while Chef is cooking also. Yeah, we are almost done. Mm, yeah. So, while well, I let it continue cooking over here, I'll just mm. start plating up a little bit. So, for this, I'm just going to keep it really simple. So, I'm going to put this sauce at the side. So, a lot of times we do a very fancy kind of plating at the restaurant. Mm. Uh, you see that we have a like, little queue at the side. Mm. So, it's actually done with a spoon. The back of the spoon, right? Even though... Ah, actually just two spoons together. Oh, using two spoons. So, actually you can just use the spoons to shape it. Oh. Then after that, I'll just place it nicely at the side. So later, we are going to put the fish beside it. Mm. So to prevent the fish from moving, I'm just going to put a little bit of that sauce at the bottom so that it will be able to hold the fish. Mm, I see. So while now, I'm just going to use my thermometer just to check the temperature again. It should be almost done. 60. Yeah, now it's 41. We'll just turn the other side. Let it finish. So this is the char that we want. Mm, yeah. uh, like even oh. on the ota, you always want mm. to make sure that there's a bit of the char. Yes, mm. yes. If not, there's no flavor. <laughs> yeah. If not, it's just going to be like steaming. Mm, mm, true. Yeah, the walkie flavor is starting to come out already. It's very, yeah. strong, very nice. Oh, 
Oh, do they take a bit longer? Alright, so don't worry, the recipes will be shared uh, in the chat, oh, box, in yeah, the chat box below at the end of the program, yeah, so one. stay tuned. It's quite, quite hot. Oh, we have another question from Winnie Go. Yep. Can we use other leaves instead of turmeric leaf of itself? Of course. Mm. The, the usual leaves that we usually use is the banana, banana leaves. leaves. Banana leaves, yeah. Uh, I ever experimented with uh, pandan leaves as well, pandan. but I find that the pandan leaf gives the dish too sweet a flavour. Mm. So the dish becomes a bit too sweet. I think if you use pandan leaf, it's quite small. Yeah, so you, you need to, to lay... A lot, uh, you have to you use need to a lot, lot of pandan leaves. Uh, uh. You have to put a lot of pandan leaves. Mm. Uh. Okay. So what's the difference, let's say, using banana leaves and turmeric leaves then? So the flavour flavour is different. The turmeric flavor leaves, you get more of that uh, herby taste. Yeah. Then mm. Banana leaves is very fragrant, uh, but then it's a lot milder actually. Oh, it's more milder. Mm, I see, I see. So if you like something strong flavour, uh, Chef will recommend to go for the turmeric leaf instead, is it? So this is, this is more uncommon. Uncommon. But uh, I thought yes, this yes. is quite quite interesting to do. Yeah, it's, uh, interesting. it's interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, we... yeah. mm. I so... will not think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so there was once, there was once uh, I actually tried doing an ota with uh, turmeric leaves. So I thought it's nice, but the turmeric taste is a little bit too strong. Mm, yeah. So now, now it's done. We just transfer it over. Then after that, we'll just unwrap this and we can plate it up and have a taste. So we're just going to let it sit there for a while, is it? Yeah, just, mm. just for a couple of seconds. Mm. So that we can make sure that all the fats that has been rendered from the fish itself, because uh, mackerel is actually a very fatty fish. Mm. So when you cook it and you let it rest, it actually sets the fats inside. So, so when you unwrap it or when you cut into it, mm. it doesn't leak out too much of the juices. Oh, oh, so sometimes it's because all this uh, collagen, all these fats has been rendered mm. or become in its liquid form. So we mm. have to allow it to sit a while, mm. bring it down to about 40 plus degrees, 50 mm. degrees, so that uh, the fats and the collagen can be able to set again. So it doesn't just spill all over the place. Mm, I see. So just yeah, to answer Yumi's question, right? Yes, uh, we can use banana leaf instead of turmeric leaf itself. But yeah, for if you want to get turmeric leaf, you can visit the wet market and just ask those people that are selling the vegetable yes. or turmeric leaf itself. Sometimes they don't like to, they don't really display the turmeric leaf in front of everyone, in front of the store itself. You have to personally ask it. Yeah, because it's to. not a very common dish. Uh, correct. Yeah, correct. So so actually, a lot of things like this. Uh, like mm. I know that sometimes I go to the wet market. Mm. And to look for laksa leaves as well. Mm. Like sometimes they also don't display it. Then you have to ask the store owner, hey, yeah. Uncle, today got laksa leaf or not? Mm. Then you're like, have, 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 how many you want? Oh. Then suddenly you see miraculously it'll come out from behind ah. with one bunch of leaves. Then you're like, huh? A lot. A lot. Mm. Mm. Or maybe if you want all these leaves, you can go to Malay stalls. Malay yes. stalls. Ah, yeah. oh. But mm. Malay stalls, Kaka, Malay stalls, sometimes I go, uh, they also hide the leaf. <laughs> uh, and then if like laksa leaf, the mm. name will be different. Not laksa leaf, ah. we will call it uh, daun kesum. Mm. Daun kesum. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Then I need to start learning more Malay. <laughs> mm. So now we just unwrap the fish. Yeah, it looks like uh, ota ota. Like mm. ota, it really looks like an ota, right? Mm. So usually I'll just take it off. So it's really, really very hot. It's nice and firm now. So the curry leaf that you lay on top of the fish just now, that one we don't need to take out, right? That one will be eaten. So, well. so yep. Yeah. Oops. Yes, that will be eaten as well. Yeah. So uh, curry leaf can be eaten. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So like it's nice. I like the nice presentation with the curry leaves. So we just put it over. So we're going to add some of the curry leaves that we have fried, fried up just now, right? The fried nice. one, yeah. Just sprinkle it over it. Ah. So now, now you can see that it's mm. a lot more. There's a lot more height to the dish. It mm. looks a lot more cleaner. Mm, I see. Then, as well as uh, we're going to put on some of the ulam raja. Mm. So for the audience that actually came late, right? Don't worry. For uh, chef actually prepared this. Uh, what's it called again? So sorry. Which one? This one, the uh, rempa. Yeah. The rempa, right? So rempa is being created through mortar and pesta by uh, actually. Just pounding it the pound, traditional way. Mm, pounding a few ingredients. Yeah. Um, uh, chef, if we don't want to pound and we want, just want to blend, blend, yeah. You can. <laughs> or blend also. Of can. course, you can. But mm. it will be fine. Uh, a lot, fine, a lot right. fine. Oh, then fine. you get so so when you blend it, 
you can still blend it to the setting that is not so fine. Mm. Um, and I find that sometimes, especially for Rumpa, you want it to be slightly more chunky and all, mm. so that you get more bites and more flavor. Mm. And I find that uh, using the mortar and pestle is actually a lot better. Alright, so the dish is done already, right? Yes, the feed dish is done. You All can right. actually taste it. Alright, so Madam Sahara, let's is it do first? a so quick tasting. Audience, this is the dry Assam fish that Chef Jay and Madam Sahara already created. So, yeah, you can so try it first. Please have a try. Yeah. yeah. It smells really good. Yeah. It's okay after that. Yeah, yes, no worries. nice and cooked. So we must eat together with a bit of the yeah, yeah. relish at the side. Mm. Mm. Sure, must be. <laughs> you also come. No, okay, mm. can. Please, please go ahead. Well, I prepare for... Mm. You really can taste the, the asam, mm. the... What? The turmeric leaf? Curry lemongrass. The lemongrass? Mm. Sarai? The sarai, yes. See, I'm learning, wow. I'm learning. Mm. Oh, it tastes really good. Mm. Sweet and sour. And most importantly, the spiciness is there to mm. actually kick in. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. This one, uh, I will eat with fries. Lah. Mm. Rice. Lah. Mm, I see, I see. Mm. Yeah, actually, the turmeric leaf and the curry leaf I really actually enhance the flavor to bring it to the whole new level. Right? The, mm, the, very nice, very nice. The, Mm, curry, curry, the crispy curry yeah. leaves also nice. Mm. Eh? Right, mm. like when you get a bit of that crunch for mm. the curry leaves, mm -hmm. so you get a lot of different textures inside. Yeah. Mm. Alright, okay, so Chef Jay, do you want to try? Or? I, yeah. Actually, I should, right? Yeah, 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 you try. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay fast, fast, fast. Mm. Alright, okay, so this is the dry Assam leaf, all right. So thank you, Madam Saharida, for yes. creating this. Mm -hmm. All right, so Madam Saharida, I'll take the leaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so right now, may I invite Madam Kamisa to actually create the second dish and uh, prepare the second dish together with Chef Jay itself. Sorry. Yeah, so go there. So just give me a second to gather myself. So second dish wise, so before that, I need to do a quick wipe down. So the next one we are going to do a vegetable fritter. So over here, uh, can I get the recipe out please? Alright, so right now we're going to show the recipe. So like what Chef mentioned, so this recipe is called, this, this dish is actually called the savoury vegetable pancake, am I right? Yes, correct. Mm. So this one is also another simple, simple dish, because right. like I think a lot of things should be simple so that we can do it easily at home. Mm. So just let me open up everything. So over here we have uh, different things, something new today yeah, that I, I haven't that really seen. I see that we have seen. lots of variety of ingredients around yeah. here. So vegetable. Mm. So here we have the peppercorn. With peppercorn, the right. peppercorn with the husk mm. and also with the corn soup itself. So we are going to use everything today. Then also we have uh, some chopped up spring onions, uh, long beans. Then over here it's uh, tempura flour, some water, eggs, as well as a mixture of soy sauce and sugar. So soy this is the one that we are going to use to make into the tare. So tare mm. is a Japanese sauce. It's like a teriyaki sauce. Mm. Uh, so today we are going to make with some of the corn stock that we are going to cook with the cup of the corn, uh, the corn soup, as well as a bit of this very beautiful uh, corn husk. Mm. Then of course today I have an additional ingredient. We have the different edible flowers. Actually this, this I saw the other day, but I would need some help from you, Madam Kamisa. So what we have here is actually the, the butterfly blue pea flower mm. here, and then we also have seronia, different colors of seronia. Which is all that. And then this one is the Hatsushia flower. Ah, nice, nice. So a lot of times we can, we can use this, especially for blue pea flowers, we can use it uh, to add into the rice to make it blue in colour, right? Like how most mm. of the Nonya dishes mm. and, and a lot of the Nonya kueh, they have it. And, right? the, and the teas also, the blue pea tea. Mm, nice. Mm. 
So, so for now, I'm just going to do a very quick, I'm just going to cut off all these kernels inside and put it into the bowl, mixing bowl. So after that, I will need Madam Kamisa to help me mix up this mixture. So I'll just quickly put it all inside. All right, so for audience who don't know, right, uh, Chef Jay actually visited Madam Kamisa's uh, garden oh. uh, just a few weeks ago. Yes. Mm, so maybe Chef Jay would like to explain about the, uh, elaborate on the experience that he saw. It was a very rainy experience. Rainy experience. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so but it was rain. very fun. Mm. Like uh, I learned a lot of different things, like uh, things like crop rotation, like mm. how they put different crops that will benefit each other together. Mm. Then at the same time, it was amazing to find like uh, on a rooftop garden. They oh, actually, it's a rooftop garden. Yes. Then mm. after that, they actually have rear their own tilapia for eating. And I was like, what are fishes doing on top of the rooftop? Oh, there's fishes on the rooftop. Or the car park, is it? Yeah, yes. It's a multi-story oh. car park. Oh, it's a multi-story car park garden. We have a small aquaponic garden. Mm. Uh, so, uh, it's system where we grow the tilapia. Mm, grow the and tilapia. And on top of it, we grow some laksa leaf and mm. meat. Ah, I see, I see. All right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, so, so we got some. It's okay, okay, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Right, so just now, Madam Kamisa actually forget to on her mic, so sorry about that. Ah, is it on? Maybe you want to test is the it? mic? No. Testing, yet. testing. Hello. Okay, okay. Can, okay. Right, on. Yeah. It's okay. Mm. So, so we can talk about the tilapias again. Mm, yeah, right. Uh, we actually have a, a small aquaponic system where we rear the tilapia and then on top of it, we grow some laksa leaf and min leaf. Mm. So uh, when the tilapia grow, we will take and steam mm. or just uh, pan fry mm. for all the gardeners to, uh, to, to mm. eat together mm. uh, before COVID. Lah. Now because mm. of COVID, we stop. <laughs> yeah, uh, I see. It's okay. I'm pretty sure it will be better soon. So over here, actually now, I just have the corn cob, the corn silk and uh, some water. So you actually mentioned uh. that this uh, purple sweet corn, is it? Yes, purple sweet corn. Mm. So what you did is actually remove the the cob itself, separate the cob and the kernel, and then you're gonna use the husk, is it? Yeah, she used the husk. It's so amazing, the, you know. He used so the, everything. So I have the silk and the cobs now together. So so yeah. the silk and the cob is inside. And yes. Add, um, then some of mm. the like again, I like to add some smokiness to everything. Mm. So I'll burn a bit of this, then I'll add it to the corn stock itself. Mm. So what you're making over there is actually like a corn stock yes. kind of thing. So ah, like the cobs itself mm. itself actually has a lot of flavor. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. So you can actually so, use the cob itself. Yes. So mm. so if you remember, like uh, whenever you eat mm. uh, corn itself, yeah. then when you finish all the kernels, then you start sucking on the cob. Then you mm. realize yeah. that it's very very sweet. So a lot of mm. the flavors is actually inside. Oh, it's, it's oh, most of the flavor is actually located inside the yes. cob itself. Then, actually, not the kernels. Yeah. Right? Ah, so so even a lot of people don't know about that. Things like the corn silk or the mm. strands that you see on the corn itself mm. is actually very very sweet. There's a lot of sugar inside it. Ah, I see. So so a lot of times like uh, when we make corn ice cream and all, mm. we actually infuse all these uh, parts of corns together ah. minus the mm. cob uh, as in minus this corn mm. husk. Uh, all of it has a lot of flavor. Mm. And if you can when you start you can see that some of the smoke is coming out. Mm. You can smell the nice flavor of the corn, roasted mm. corn. Oh yeah, yeah, I do smell the sweetness. Mm. Sweetness yeah, yeah, correct, correct. and a bit so of I like the know. roasted mm. corn that you see at the mm. Pasar Malam. Mm. Sometimes oh, they have yeah, the yeah, roasted corn. Correct. So what Chef doing is actually doing here, right? It's actually utilizing the entire corn itself. Instead of, because usually how people cook corn, right? Is they remove the kernel, which is the, the one at the, the seeds outside. And then they actually throw away whatever the remaining things, right? Yeah. So chef actually utilize every single part of the so corn I'm itself. So just going to add this to the stock. So we just cook mm. this together, let it infuse for like a good 10 minutes. Mm. Then at the same time, I'm going to, in a small pot, I'm going to start cooking the tare. Mm, I see. So you got to slow cook the stock, is it? Yes. Slow, really slow. You want cook. me to start so, pissing yeah. this? Yeah. So for this, can you help me uh, add all this together, including the uh, egg itself. Okay. Then after that, later we will we just mix it nicely. Okay. Yeah. Can. Can. Thank you. Then in the meantime, I'll start on the tare sauce because the tare will take uh, some time. So it's uh, going to, we are going to caramelize the soy sauce and the sugar. Mm. Then with the corn stock, the purple corn stock that we have. 
then later this will, this will become the sauce, or more like the sauce that we're going to drizzle over the vegetable pancake. Mm, I see. So, so over here, the tempura flour we use is a Japanese tempura flour. So it actually has a mixture of different flours inside. Mm. So you have something that is uh, crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. Mm. So Chef, I'm amazed that the, the whole part of the corn can be used mm. for cooking. <laughs> Normally so, we throw the, the soot and the, mm, the yeah, cover, you know? Yeah, because I guess it's a bit more messy to cook this way. Mm. Uh, but I, I really like it. Mm. So later you can try try out, then after that you see the flavours of it. So apart from making using the all the parts to make the corn stock itself, right? Is there any other dishes that we can make using the the corn cob and the corn silk or this? So the 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 corn silk. So mm. sometimes uh, for the western for our western dishes, mm. uh, we actually use it into making a corn custard, oh. uh, corn ice cream. Mm. So a lot of different ways. Uh, sometimes we can even do like a fermented corn. Mm. So, so fermentation is a very big thing nowadays because mm. like uh, fermented food is good for the body. Mm. It helps with digestion and all. Mm. Oh, true, true. Yeah. So I'm going to let just turn this down for a bit. Yeah. So, Madam Kamisa, your, yes. your community garden is located at Sky Garden at Jurong Central Zone D itself, right? Like you mentioned just now, it's a yeah, it's rooftop. A Car, car park rooftop garden yes. style, right? Yeah. Yes. And also you mentioned that you grow lots of different vegetables. What, what, what are some of the common vegetables you found over there? Oh, we, go, we grow harigot, harigot, mm. winter harigot, melon, winter melon. Yeah, vegetables. Mm. And then also we have banana. banana. We have mm. uh, cassa apple. Mm. Then we also have, uh, depend on the season. Uh, currently we have cabbage. Cabbage. Yeah, mm. growing. Then uh, we, we have brinjal too. Mm. Then we have uh, moringa leaf, which is mm. good. Mm, uh, to make into fritters also. So what, what kind of other fishes that you grow there so apart from tilapia? Tilap we only have tilapia. Only have tilapia. Yeah. Ah, then see. we have a uh, water lily pond where we have some guppies. Uh. Mm. Yeah. Normally uh, for us we have a program where the uh, kindergarten kids mm. they come and grow their own veggie there and mm. then they will harvest and bring back to their center to cook. Oh, yeah. So nice. Sure. Yeah. Oh. So that's uh, the the sharing session mm. enjoyed by everybody la. I see. Mm. So is it the entire? Yeah, we have a uh, six yeah, and right. seven story. Six and six and seven story. Yes. Ah, interesting. So I'll, we I'll visit there someday as well. Yeah. <laughs> I never it seen definitely this kind of concept to, before. Mm. Like it's really really amazing. Mm. Like, like I remember that she was sharing with me that uh, they started with a small plot of land, mm. then slowly slowly they expand the garden itself. Mm. I see. Okay, ready, ready, chef. Very good. So for this, uh, because it's unseasoned, the, the tempura flour is unseasoned, we're going to just season it with a bit of the salt. Salt, okay. So salt, salt is very essential. So this is the tempura, is it? Or the is pancake the, batter. Oh, the pancake batter. So, so the pancake batter, mm. uh, we This pepper, yeah, pepper, is it? Yeah, a bit of pepper as well. Mm. I like pepper in everything. There's lots of different vegetables in the yeah. pancake yeah. batter itself. Mm. Then, then we have already the added the... The purple sweet can make it look... Mm, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> so now I'm just going to heat up the pan a little bit. Mm. Then after that, I'll get Madam Kamisa to help me fry up the pancakes. Oh. So this is mm. easy. So now, just waiting for the pan to be hot. Do you need to rest this before you cook? No, this, this is okay because uh, mm. there's not... Uh, it's just a mix of flour. Oh, okay. So we don't have to let it rest too much. Mm. So we just wait for this to mm. be slightly on the hotter side, slightly smoky, then we mm. add it on. If you don't wait for it to smoke or you mm. add it when it's cold, then there's uh, chances for the batter to stick to it. Ah, so you make sure the, the pan is hot really enough. hot. Yes. Mm. So when, when it's hot enough, there's actually some reaction going on. Like mm. when the water touches it, there's mm. going to be uh, some steam generated, so it mm. acts as a protective layer ah. between the pan and the dish itself. Ah, I see, I see. So, so that it doesn't stick. So now you can see that it's gently smoking. Mm. Then we can just add uh, a bit of this batter to it with the mixture. So I want, I like, I like mine with a lot of vegetables. Mm. So I'll just add about two spoons in the center, then just spread it out into a nice pancake. Two and a half. I'm greedy. Mm. So we'll just fry it up. Uh, I, I look like 
Watery, but when you fry, it's okay, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Look watery, but when you fry, it's okay. Mm. Now after that, you actually harden up. You can see that now it's already hardened up already. Mm. So once it's hardened up, then we just flip it over. Because now it's a little bit hot, I'm going to turn it. Oh, so actually okay. one side, we only need to fry up for let's say one minute only. So probably mm. a bit longer, mm. so that we can have the vegetables cook, mm. more cook. So I'm just going mm. to going to turn down the heat a little bit so mm. once later you see that this is the other side is done as well then just help me flip over then we just put it over here okay yeah. okay so i'll leave the frying to you mm, okay. i'm going to prepare some of the garnish for now uh, which is the spring onion the green portions so the white portion of the spring onion is the place where it has a lot of the flavor mm. the very raw spring onion flavor that i've added to the batter itself so the white the white part is the most yes the most flavor so the green part as well, there's a lot of flavor, mm. but uh, it has a very different, uh, it has a more softer crunch. Mm. So this we are going to use as garnish. Garnishing. So if you go to all the Chinese restaurants, you mm, see yeah. that um, they have the spring onion garnish that mm. curls out nicely. Mm. So that's what we are going to do today with this. Ah, I see. So, so what just do with the, all these blue pea So blue pea flowers, flowers and all, we are going to use it at the end to the end. garnish it together. Ah, I see. So, so we don't need to cook it. Like, okay. Yes. Mm. So that, that can be eaten raw. Ah. So I'm just going to slice it by the side. Mm. Then after that, just put it uh, into the ice water, shock it, so that it's able to curl up nicely. Mm. Then we can use this as a nice garnish. May I know what's the difference between a purple sweet corn and a normal sweet corn? Because purple, purple sweet corn is something I've never seen before actually. Uh, so actually, mm. the difference is more of the starch content. The starch content. Mm. And the flavour itself is a bit different. What kind of different is it? This, this, I think, Madam Kamisa will be able to tell us even better. Mm. Yeah. It's more chewy. It's more, more chewy, chewy eh? yeah. and then creamy and chewy. Creamy, creamy yeah. and chewy. So yeah, I think actually, this is the first time we try growing purple street corn. Mm. Uh, yeah, then we, we, we also first time to try it, but it, I think I like it. We will grow again. <laughs> is, is it something you can find in the wet market itself? The no, corn? don't no. have. Yeah. Also, they don't really sell. It's more purple. specialized. Mm. It's more specialized. Uh. So, so usually purple sweet corn, uh, mm. people don't use it as much. Or actually, mm. you can actually see it nowadays uh, in the Mexican restaurants. Mm. Uh, when they make their taco, you see the purple taco. Mm. It's actually made from the purple sweet corn. Yep. Ah, okay, looks good. Then we can do another two more pieces. Another two more pieces, all right. So, so the thing about purple sweet corn is that it actually has a higher starch content. That's why mm. it's more sticky. I see. Then because it has higher starch content, so it, it's, it will signify that it's a lot sweeter mm. because starch is sugar. Mm, I see. So for the batter itself, right, apart from putting spring onion and the corn kernels, what other things you can put inside the batter? Oh, you can actually put a lot of uh, different vegetables inside. Different vegetables. So any vegetables that you can think of, like uh, capsicum, French mm. beans, uh, carrots, mm. anything, yeah. or even any cabbage. Any kinds of vegetables, actually. Yeah, yeah cabbage, cabbage ah. will be good as well. Ah. So I think this is one of the ways that we can uh, make mm. vegetables mm. for the kids to eat. Because a lot of times, if you serve them vegetables on its own, yeah, they, uh, they don't like it. They'll be sure. like, Ugh, I mm. don't like. Oh, that's a very smart idea. I yeah. think that's a great idea also. Yeah, so all the audience out there, yeah, if you don't get your kids to actually eat vegetable, yeah, you can do it something like that. Savory yep. vegetable pancake. Yeah, so the batter is very simple to do. Just get some flour and eggs and mix it together with some vegetables to do. Right? Yes, correct. Just make sure that we don't cook it over too mm. high heat so that the ve vegetables itself is able to cook. So, because the purple sweet corn is impossible to find from in the wet market itself, right? Yes. We can replace it with a normal sweet corn, right? Of course. Mm, I see. The even like the ones that if you want something that's on sweeter side, I think in the mm. wet markets you can actually find the white corn. The white corn. Or the one that is uh, yellow and white together. Mm, then yeah. that's a lot sweeter. A lot more sweeter. Yeah, the mm. white, especially the white corn, very oh, very the sweet. White one is, oh, I didn't know that. Oh. So the white ones are actually more sweeter. So. But then uh, mm. a bit more expensive, lah. <laughs> more expensive. Ah, I see. So then, Kamisa, you should grow in your market, in your community <laughs> garden itself. Yeah. We are. We just started on the black corn. Black corn. Black corn. Nice. Oh. You, you like to grow all the exotic stuff. <laughs> so I, I know that you are going to start growing the different kind of, uh, what is that called? Like squash, like zucchini or pumpkin. Is oh that? yeah, yeah. There, there'll be a mm. edible competition coming up in October, organized by NPARKS. Mm. So uh, we, all the gardeners 
we will try to grow, each, each one will try to grow different crops and see whether mm. we can have a, a, a good harvest that we can enter the competition. Mm. <laughs> so for now, once we are done with that, then we can actually plate it up. Mm, I see. So the, one, the, the corn stock there is... So the corn stock, the corn stock, we have actually added the corn stock with the soy sauce as mm. well as the sugar to it. So mm. you can see that it's bubbling up nicely, mm. starting to get a bit thicker. So you're gonna make it to like a paste, like a very so, thick so it's, paste. So it's more of like a teriyaki sauce kind teriyaki of consistency. Sauce kind of, oh, uh, consistency. A bit sticky, mm. dark, sweet, ah, and all. I see. Just that this is all made from uh, everything that we can get from the corn itself. Mm, I see. So there's no waste. Yeah. And later, you, when you taste it together with the fritter, you you can taste. You can actually taste the flavor of the corn itself oh, inside. So I thought this is quite interesting to do. Mm. So some of the additional ones, I'm going to use it to garnish the plate. So just burn it a bit, then put it at the base of the plate. At the base of the plate? Yep. So, but if you burn it, you, uh, this one, is it still edible? Uh, still... Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, There's too much no. fibers inside. Ah, I see, I see. Okay. So I'm just going to burn it a bit so that uh, it gets a bit of that smoky flavor to mm. the pancake later together. Mm. So this one you can actually, instead of burning, you can actually pan fry it as well too. Because I understand that some people don't have this burner at home. Yes, mm. actually you can buy it. I, oh, I actually okay. bought this from the wet market. Oh, wet market also got sell. Like all the mm. places where they sell a lot of the paints, mm. all the utensils, mm. all the... Mm. Yeah, alright, so we have a question from can the ground. Okay. Alright, so uh, Tan Xi Lin also asked a question. Yeah. So this corn cob soup right just can add it. water to the corn cob mm. and just boil it is it don't worry let me off it yeah hold on let me just un understand the question further yeah. all right so for the corn cob soup itself right chef yes you just need to add water to the corn cob and just boil is it correct mm. so water to the corn cob so that we can extract all the flavors mm. and the silk also and the silk and the silk also yeah so so don't forget about the silk silk uh the cob itself and I water you need to add yeah. This one, the first one, the color very nice. Do you need to add any like salt that. or sugar into the stock itself? So no. So for that, I use as a base stock. So every mm. time when we want to season something, it's always at the end. Oh, at the end, alright. Because if you season it at the start, then you think it's nice. Mm. Then after that, as you cook, as the water evaporates and boils, mm. then you're like, eh, it becomes more salty. Ah. Mm, yeah. Actually, another so, question on the ground also. Yep. Uh, can you repeat the other two flowers beside the blue pea corn itself that we'll be using for... Uh, the flowers? Yeah, flowers. Yeah, we have blue pea, toronia, and astasia flower. Blue pea? Toronia. Toronia. And astasia flower. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Complicated names. <laughs> yes. I see. Okay, so we're going to use all these three flowers for garnishing, for garnishing on top of here. So, and it's edible also. Yes, it's mm, edible flowers. So all these flowers, mm. uh, actually, you can uh, find it at all the Michelin restaurants mm. and all. But then, interestingly, like it's actually not very hard to grow, right? Yeah. But then we actually buy it at a very expensive mm. price. Yeah. Like uh, most of the time, we import it from France itself. And a packet like this mm. will cost me about $30. $30. Mm. Oh, but really? today, I'm getting it for free. So you can, you can get this from the wet market itself? No, no, no. no. Actually, we, 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 grow, uh, we grow it ourselves. Ah, yeah. ourselves. So I think butterfly, blue butterfly, uh, the pea flower, mm. blue pea, you can get it in dried form uh, from yeah. certain yes, yes. place. Yeah. So, so this we have already just put on the corn stock itself mm. and just going to add a bit of this. Oh, okay. Spring, spring onion. Final oh, so okay. the green part of the spring onion, I'm going to use it to garnish on top. Yeah, mm. okay. So you can see that it has curled up nicely. Mm. And also for the corn stock itself, right, apart from the corn cob and the corn seed, right, you have to add soya sauce, is it? The soy sauce, soy and sauce the sugar and just sugar itself. So so we are actually making like a corn teriyaki. Mm, yeah. So afterwards, you just need to slow cook it or even high cook it to make it to a very thick consistency kind of paste. Yeah. Like so a teriyaki sauce kind of paste. The thing is that uh, when it's hot, it's going to mm. be watery. Mm, so when so it cools down, that's when it starts to thicken up. Ah, I see. Because it's like a caramelization of the sugar. Mm. So sugar, when you make into a caramel, when it's cold, mm. then it becomes harder. Mm, okay. So when it's hot, it's very hard for you to tell the texture of mm. it. So to finish it, we are just going to add some of this nice edible right, flowers. So we're going to finally use the flowers. Yeah, so you can see that there's a lot of different colors. Mm. The purple ones, actually, there's some of the pink ones as well. Mm. 
So we are just so they all have different tastes, right? Uh, uh, so so it depends on the breed. So oh. for this type, it's going to taste the same because it comes from the same family. Yes, mm. only different color. Yes, only yeah. different color. Mm. But it makes it very attractive. But it brightens up your dish, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see that now, now, now the dish is a lot more. Yeah. Uh, so, so you can see the dish now has a lot more color, a lot more like the flowers actually brought life to the dish itself. Oh yes, yes, yes. Like you see, then a lot of uh, some of the tricks that we have. So you can see that a lot of things too. Four, five. Uh, a lot of these flowers are actually used uh, in odd numbers. Mm. So sometimes when we put it in even numbers, it feels a little bit weird. Mm. So in the restaurants, we like to put all these flowers like a mm. uh, make sure that it's odd numbers and then it's uh, space out so that uh, it doesn't clutter at one side. So just one more piece of this over here, then that's it. Oh, it so looks really, really yeah, good. It looks Such a simple <laughs> dish with just easy ingredients. All the ingredients you can find and just whip up into something like that. All right, so audience, so this is- So how do you serve the sauce? So you just pour now over I, it or I you pour, just put it in separate bowl? So I pour over it, then you can also serve it separately okay. at the side. So if some people like small like flavor, you can actually put it. Like mm. Okay. Right. Okay. Can, so, can act as a dipping sauce also? Huh? Yes, you can add as dipping sauce as well. Mm, okay. Alright, so this is the savoury vegetable pancake. So, so you okay. can actually try yep. a bit right, of so the pancake. pancake. So I'm going to take a tissue. Uh, uh, <laughs> put it on the tissue and just... No, no. Uh, you, you take some tissue, no, no, no. take some tissue, and then put, put the pancake on the tissue. Okay, can, can, can. Yep. Then just maybe take one and put on the tissue. Yeah. Just try some. Mm. Slice one also. Yeah. This for you first. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, like you can see, like even mm. with the corn cob mm. at the bottom, no, at the corn mm. husk. Mm. Like after we burn mm. it, we put it at the bottom. It, it creates mm. like a more, a, a lot more high class feel mm. to the plate. So the corn cob that is inside the, the stock itself, that one cannot be used anymore, right? Unfortunately, it cannot. The it's corn. too hard. It's too hard already. Yeah. All right. Do you want to try the sauce? <laughs> you can try. Mm. Yeah. So just a little bit because oh, it's a bit. A little bit will do. Yeah. Okay. okay yeah. Tasting right now. Mm, the pancake is just so yummy. I want to get another bite. <laughs> yeah. <Very good. laughs> it's good, right? No, it's, it's very good. Very, very it's, nice. It's mm. so simple, but actually it has a lot of different flavors, mm. a lot yes, of yes, different yes. texture. I can really taste the corn in the, oh, the, the corn taste in the salt in the, really in the sauce did, itself very you nice you really did not waste the corn you used everything mm. and the flavor really come out mm. Mm. thank you for sitting us you're welcome <laughs> all right so currently give me a moment huh? all right so thank you madam saharida for preparing the wonderful dish of this uh, savory vegetable pancake and right now uh, madam saharida will take uh, madam kamisa will take the lead okay thank you yep so it's time for Q&A. Alright, Q &A. so right now it's time for Q&A. Yep. So I'd like to open the ground, uh, open some questions. I'm sure you got some questions that you want to ask. So uh, <laughs> if you want to ask any questions, feel free to just click the raise hand function located at the bottom of uh, below of the Zoom. And just, and I will actually spotlight you and you can ask the question live. Else you can simply, if you're feeling shy, you can just type, type, down, type, down, the, type down your questions in the chat box below. Alright. So we'll just give, let's say one minute to, to uh, wait, for, wait for some questions, if I have any. Sure. Mm. Alright, so the two dish that we created just now, the first dish mm. was dry Assam fish, yes. more towards a spice, sweet and spicy, and yet sour kind of yeah, uh, so, macro so, fish. So like normally, Assam mm. fish, we only eat it in one way, uh, because it's mo mostly cooked together in the whole pot itself. Mm. So this time around, I separated it into two components. Mm. So we actually have three different ways to eat it. You can mm. eat the relish on its own, mm. then you can eat the fish on its own. Mm. Then when you have it together, it becomes a Assam fish itself. Mm. I see. All right. And of course, our second dish, which is this dry, savory, uh, flavor, flavorful vegetable pancake. Yes. Well, made, made from the corn itself. Yeah. So, so, so mm. like every part of the corn itself. Mm. So likewise, if we want to do it, we can do it with a lot of mm. other vegetables. So this mm. is just like a base recipe. Mm. You can change the combination inside. You can mm. add in some pumpkin, you can add in some mm. squash, uh, even some ladyfingers, mm. or any type of vegetables that you think. 
Yes, correct. And if your children doesn't really like to eat vegetable, right? Yeah, you can just simply whoop up this yeah. uh, vegetable so, pancake. So I think the, the children will be okay with the pancake itself, but I think the green portion, <laughs> the spring onion itself, they will be like, okay. take, right. take so one you, act, you, you just need to mix the vegetable into the batter itself and you just pan fry the batter, it will become a pancake already. Yeah, a lot, a lot of things that is uh, yep. more shallow fry, deep fry, all the kids will like. Yeah, all right. Then we so, have a sweet sauce. Can we spell out the two name of the flower, please? Two name of the flower. Yeah, apart from the blue pea flowers, right? There's other two names. Madam, uh, Madam Kamisa will help to spell right, with so that. Madam Kamisa she's she's an spell. expert in this field. Uh, yes, correct. She's an expert here. <laughs> like, like even I'm still learning. I'm, so so I'm, we'll type down the, the name in the chat box, is it? Yep. Oh, so we'll yeah. type down the name in the chat so, box. So don't worry, we'll type that out in the yep. chat box. Alright, so do we have any other final questions? All right, don't worry. Okay, we have one more question from Amina. All right, so can we use the kaffir lime leaf instead of curry leaf? Or can we use kaffir ka lime, lime leaf instead of curry leaf? Can. For so, the fish so, itself? so this is just a, my rendition of the asam fish. Mm. So of course, if you add the kaffir lime leaf, you have a lot of that uh, kaffir lime flavor that is mm. very rich, very nice, like a lime, lime zest as well. Mm. So it's, you can substitute the leaves with the leaves that you like, the flavor that you want. Mm. So this is just a recipe that you can play around with. Mm. So actually those leaves you can actually just place on top, right? You can place mm. on top, but for kaffir lime leaf, uh, mm. I would suggest that you put a bit lesser because put it's a, a lot stronger in flavor. Ah, I when see. you have too much, you will overpower the whole dish. Oh, I see. Okay, understood. Okay, Ken. All right, so, all right, so that's all. All right, so we have come to the end of the virtual live food waste reduction cooking demo. Thank you, Chef Jay, Madam Kamisa and Madam Saharida. And last but not least, all the community gardens, gardeners and guests for joining us today. We hope you have enjoyed the cooking demo and able to use this knowledge to actually, that you have learned today to utilize all the edible plants to, in cooking to minimize food wastage itself. Let's continue to grow edibles in support of strengthening food resilience in the long term. Thank you and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.